Hello, everybody, and welcome to Penguins to Go, your daily dose of Pittsburgh Penguins news and analysis. You can find us on YouTube at Inside the Penguins or anywhere you get your podcasts from. I'm your host, Nick Berlansky, and today we're talking about some injury news. It's the first time on Penguins to Go that I've had to talk about injury news, but not the first time that the Pittsburgh Penguins have been faced with injuries this season, as this time it is Jeff Petrie. We all saw what happened to him on Saturday. If you did not, it was against the Buffalo Sabres. He ran into the boards behind the Penguins net in a collision with Buffalo Sabres forward Alex Tuck. You could see his wrist got caught a little bit. After that game, he said he was fine, but apparently he was not as the Penguins placed him on long-term injured reserve yesterday uh, for an upper body injury. So with that, he will be out for the minimum of 10 games played, 24 days, which will mean he is eligible to return and be taken off LTIR on January 8th against the Arizona Coyotes. But that doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to return. We saw it with Teddy Bluger earlier this season. Just because you're eligible to return at that point doesn't mean you will. I'm sure we will get clarification from Mike Sullivan today after Penguins practice, just how far out we can expect Jeff Petrie's return to be. I assume you're going to hear him say something along the lines of week to week. But with that, the Penguins do have to find a way to replace Jeff Petrie. And that's a tough question. Because when you look at what Petrie has been for the Pittsburgh Penguins this season, that's one of their best defensemen. The Petrie and Pedersen duo has been the best pairing the Penguins have thrown out on the ice all season long, especially on the penalty kill. They're not leading in ice time on the penalty kill, but they are certainly the best penalty killers defensively that the Pittsburgh Penguins have used this season, the best duo the Penguins have used this season on the man disadvantage. Not only that, Petrie was playing every facet of the game and logging heavy minutes in every facet of the game. Especially the penalty kill I mentioned, but he was also just second in the team in total in average time on ice, playing over 22 minutes per game. That's going to be tough to fill in, especially when you consider the fact that Chris Letang is already higher than that. You can't just add more minutes for Chris Letang, and we'll get to what this means for Letang here in a few minutes. But it's going to be tough to replace Petrie, to fill those minutes, and to get the same production on the defensive side of the puck that Petrie was able to bring. It is a tough blow for the Penguins heading into a really, really difficult stretch of games to end out the 2022 calendar year. In accordance with this move, the Penguins did get some salary cap space to be able to call a couple of players up. They bring up Mark Friedman, who was called up previously in the season but didn't play in a game. Played a couple of games last season for the Pittsburgh Penguins, 26 to be exact. So he will be up as the Penguins' seventh defenseman. And they also recalled Drew O'Connor to get them to the 23rd man on the NHL roster, which they've been playing with 22 out of the 23 available spots all season. They will fill that 23rd spot with the vacancy of Jeff Petrie and the opening of a little bit of salary cap space with Drew O'Connor, the leading scorer for the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins. So we'll see if he factors into anything going forward. He has played three games this season at the NHL level. But defensively, the Penguins are going to stay as is. We've seen what the main pairings are going to be. So unless there's another injury, knock on wood, hopefully there's not, you're probably going to see Marcus Pedersen Chris Letang as your top pairing, Brian Dumoulin, Jan Ruda as the second pairing, and P.O. Joseph and Chad Ruweedle as your third pairing. Dumoulin, Ruda, Working together pretty well as the, the third D pairing. We'll see what they're able to do if they get pushed up minutes-wise and responsibility-wise. P.O. Joseph, he stepped up big time when Chris Letang went down. He increased his game, become much more visible, became much more aggressive with the puck. His skating looked crisper. He looked a little bit more, like I said, aggressive. He's going to have to do that again with Jeff Petrie out. It's not to the same level that Chris Letang was, but Jeff Petrie is an offensive defenseman in his own right. So P.O. Joseph, along with Chad Ruedel, who has been very good 
in this few amount of games that he's played this season. I believe he's played almost 10 games, which is not a minuscule sample size, but it's 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 not much. But he's played very well. His underlying numbers are always tremendous. He is a steady and stout defensive defenseman. And when you look at what he did last season, a lot of people thought that the Jan Ruda signing was not needed because of how well Chad Ruido played in that third pairing right side slot. Well, now Ruido's going to get another chance over the next couple of weeks to dominate that slot again and to raise his stock again like he did last season. And I'm sure he's going to take advantage of that. I mean, if there was a sixth man of the year award for the NHL or seventh defenseman of the year, it'd go to Chad Ruido almost every time. So excited to see what he's able to do with the opportunity. But also, this does a lot for three more players in certain areas. First and foremost, this is going to put a lot more responsibility and a lot more weight on the shoulders of Chris Letang. Letang was averaging, so far this season, 24 minutes of ice time. That would be the lowest average ice time for Letang since 2009-2010. Now, of course, Jeff Petrie could be out for a little over three weeks. This move was retroactive to the 11th, so it does help a little bit with, with the days. And it does also tack on that game that he missed on, on Monday night against Dallas. But he's going to miss at least 10 games, which is one-eighth of the season. 13% of the season. And Chris Letang, a main reason why his ice time numbers were down, was because the Penguins could rely on Jeff Petrie to be that guy. Because the Penguins could rely on Jeff Petrie, along with Marcus Pedersen, to play the penalty kill. Chris Letang has not killed penalties all that much this year. Yeah, he has some, some penalty kill time on ice, but he hasn't done it as an actual penalty killing defenseman. He hasn't been in the main rotation when the Penguins are fully healthy. He's going to have to now. Right? Unless they also balance it out with Chad Ruedel, Chris Letang's going to have to play more time on the penalty kill. He's going to have to play more time in general because when you lose a guy that plays 22 minutes a game, like Chad Ruedel is the actual man that is coming into the lineup. He's not going to play 22 minutes per night. Jan Ruda is not going to step up and play 22 minutes every single night. Now, are both of them going to offset a little bit? Yes. But at the end of the day, this means a lot for Chris Letang. It means that he is going to be much, much more busy on the blue line for the Pittsburgh Penguins. He's going to be logging those 27, 28, God forbid, 30-minute games once again. And that, at the end of the day, is not what the Penguins wanted. That's why they traded for a defenseman with a large contract like Jeff Petrie, because they wanted somebody who could take some of the responsibility, some of the ice time away from Chris Letang. And that's what Jeff Petrie brings. So with him out, Chris Letang is going to have to step back into that role like we've seen him do in previous years. On the power play, listen, Chris Letang can't play any more time on the power play than he is. Jeff Petrie was leading the second power play unit. That's going to go to P.O. Joseph, and I'm excited to see what he's able to do. Now, I know a lot of people are saying is, is the fact that P.O. Joseph and the second power play unit, it's not like they play very often. The Penguins' first unit is out there most of the time. You're correct. But if you look at this little power play goal streak that the Penguins are on six straight games. In a lot of those games, the second power play unit has not only gotten ice time, but has scored some goals. Go back in time. Kasperi Kapanen scored two power play goals that game that he had his hat trick. The third goal that he scored was two seconds after the power play. It was the second power play unit that kind of kick-started this little streak here. So P.O. Joseph is now that guy on that unit. It's a great opportunity for him to continue to progress. And like I said, when we saw Latang out, he stepped up big time and his game went to another level. The Penguins need that again here with Jeff Petrie out. Even if that still means that P.O. Joseph is deployed on the third pairing. I think playing with a guy like Chad Ruedel is going to help P.O. Joseph unlock that offensive potential even more. And we saw him score his second career goal on Monday. I'm not saying he's going to score goals. 
I'm saying the aggressive plays, the aggressive passes, jumping up in the rush, jumping up in the zone. That's what you're going to see from P.O. Joseph because that's what you're lacking with Jeff Petrie out of the lineup. The last guy I want to talk about really quickly is Ty Smith. A lot of Penguins fans are clamoring for Ty Smith even when the team's fully healthy. A lot of Penguins fans, when they saw that Jeff Petrie was going on the long-term injured reserve, said, all right, this is Ty Smith time, and only to be shut down when Mark Friedman got the recall. All I'm going to say about Ty Smith is you're going to have to be patient. It's not the right time right now. Would I like to see Ty Smith at the NHL level? Yes, because I do think that offensively, he's as gifted as they come on the back end. Defensively, that's that's what the Penguins are trying to figure out in Wilkes-Barre. He's leading the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins in points among defensemen. But that's not the reason that he's down there. The reason he's down there is, one, he doesn't have to go through waivers. And P.O. Joseph did. And two, because the Pittsburgh Penguins have seven other defensemen that can carry the torch with him down there. And if they don't feel he's ready... And if they don't feel the time is right, they also have an eighth in Mark Friedman, which is why he got called up. Seven of the next Penguins games are against playoff teams. Five of them are in the division, and five of them are also on the road. This is a crazy stretch for the Pittsburgh Penguins to end this calendar year 2022 and the first two games of next year, which will be the Winter Classic at Fenway and then a game at Vegas. It's a tough stretch. This is not the time to experiment because this is an important stretch. Like I said, five of those next nine games are against division opponents, and they're not the bad ones. You're not playing the Flyers. You're not playing the Blue Jackets. You're playing the Devils, who are the only team ahead of them. You're playing the Islanders, who are right there. The Rangers, who are right there. The Hurricanes, who are literally sniffing your tail if you're the Pittsburgh Penguins. This is not the time to experiment with Ty Smith, who defensively has not been his strong suit in in the past. Chad Ruedel is the guy to go in there and replace Jeff Petrie for the duration of this. And if you need to throw in a guy, throw in Mark Friedman. It's not time to take Ty Smith out of his progression in Wilkes-Barre to experiment with him in some very important games. Because as we've seen in the past, this playoff system that the NHL has is very dependent upon results in division play. And the Penguins have big division games coming up to end the season. And even the ones that aren't in the division, Florida, uh, sorry, excuse me, tomorrow night. And also uh, a game against Detroit, a team that's bouncing around the playoffs. They're very important games coming up. Boston, Vegas, if you look a little further out at the end of that nine game stretch. They're very important games. It's a very important stretch. It's a tough stretch. And it's just not the right time to bring Ty Smith up. Shoot, this might not be the season. He's going to get a shot eventually. They would not have traded John Marino purely as a cap dump to bring in a talented young player, a 22-year-old, may I remind you, in Ty Smith. The Penguins are being extremely patient with this process, and so should you. Like I said, he's 22 years old. Eventually, a defenseman will get traded. If not, Brian Dumoulin's contract's up at the end of the year. You would imagine he's not getting re-signed. Eventually, a spot will open for Ty Smith. Now is just not that time. The big names you got to watch out for with Jeff Petrie out, Chris Letang, and P.O. Joseph. They're going to be the ones carrying the brunt of the load that Jeff Petrie is leaving behind. That's going to do it for this one. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to Penguins To Go. You can find us on YouTube at Inside the Penguins, or anywhere you get your podcast from. We wish Jeff Petrie a speedy and quick recovery. We can't wait to see him back out there on the ice. And we get ready for Penguins taking on the Florida Panthers down in Florida at sunrise tomorrow evening. That'll do it for this one. Have a great day, Pens fans. 